मैम एक्चुअली यू आर म्यूट हस्त यू Oh yeah thank you thank you so much everyone i completely missed that yeah no i was saying that uh, we talked about prayer and how when we pray according to the will of god then uh, you know we we can be con very confident that god hears us okay uh, so what do you do when you don't know the will of god that you try it but you are not able to figure out the will of god what to do Yeah, please you can share your view with me okay okay uh so that the same pray okay fine yeah so pray to find out right because see you see um, uh ephesians 5 you know it says that we must we must find out we must understand the will of god uh and when we understand the will of god regarding a matter then it becomes easy for us to go after that so when we don't know it's uh, our responsibility to find out okay but after we have made our effort if we are at a point uh, where we are still not sure hey what does god really want for me i've done my part but i'm not able to tell uh, we can do a couple of things one is pray so that says pray you could also pray in the spirit right because when we pray in the spirit in tongues we are praying in the will of god okay so we may not understand it but we can pray uh, in the spirit so that way at least we know that i am praying in the will of god and god will, and you can ask god give me revelation of whatever i just prayed right so you can pray in the spirit that really helps bring revelation from god and in addition to that jesus prayed a prayer of consecration um in matthew 26 in the garden of gethsemane where he had his will uh, in a certain direction so he did not want to go through the pain of uh, the cross and separation from the father so he said uh, if it be possible like if it be your will then let this cup be removed from me but ultimately what did jesus do you know he prayed a prayer of consecration and he said but not my will but yours be done so when you come to that place right where you feel okay god my heart is going in this direction because i think this is your will but then you know not my will but yours be done so basically you surrender you give it over to the lord and say god now you work in my life you show me you reveal to me what is uh, the direction that i need to take so these are a couple of things that we can do in case you know after uh, trying to know the will of god we are still at a place of uh, uh, sort of you know um, unclear okay so uh, that uh, is something that might help okay then moving on here we find it says and if we know that he hears us whatever we ask we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him so same thing in line with the confidence that uh, we the assurance that we have uh, when we pray in god's will so he's kind of reiterating that he says that and we know no means what it is settled in our hearts we are not uh, wondering we are not confused or oh, will god really uh do this we we are not in that position but we know that he hears us whatever we ask we know that we have the petitions so petitions are uh, basically requests okay so whatever we have um brought before the lord as our request so those those things god has already heard us why because we have prayed according to the will of god okay then uh if again now you see how john is writing now he's coming to uh, seems like a slightly uh different subject but this is also uh going to include prayer in it 
Uh, but it, it is addressing another matter. He says, if anyone sees his brother sinning a sin which does not lead to death, he will ask and he will give him life for those who commit sin not leading to death. So basically, he's saying, look, if there is a brother who has, uh, you know, gone so far away in sin, okay, or a life of uh, disobedience uh, before God, to an extent, he says, sin which does not lead to death. And then he says, commit a sin that, again, you know, does not lead to death. So it implies that there is a sin which leads to death. Okay. Now, what could that sin be? Uh, it's it's kind of hard to put a finger on that, but we just know that you know somebody who is very unrepentant uh, and you know who has uh, not responded to God's convictions and they have just gone deeper and deeper to um, live a life of uh, pleasure and you know uh, we we see that right in the book of hebrews like you basically uh, go far away from god to an extent where it is um, you know a, to a degree of no return okay uh, and it, that happens that does happen so uh, we are warned about it and in this case also uh, we are told that there is a sin which leads to death now, what is this death? Is he saying that salvation will be taken away from that person? Uh, not necessarily, right? Because salvation, once God gives it to us, we don't really see that God is taking away salvation from anyone. But when this death is mentioned, it could mean physical death. Okay, So maybe the believer has uh, been sinning to such an extent that you know, un, uh, uh, not heeding to the warning that God says, okay, fine, you know, there's nothing, there's no way of reforming this individual. And uh, thereby he moves away from the protection of God and physical death happens. So we also see, right, when Paul writes about uh, uh, the communion, he says that those who do not drink in a, those who do not partake in a worthy manner. And some of you uh, are sick, some of you have, and some others have died. Okay, so uh, it is possible that you know uh, there there is sin or moving away from God to an extent where that believer experiences physical death even, right? Because the person does not respond to God. Okay, but uh, please do uh, bear in mind that when we look at scriptures, we also read about. God's forgiveness. And isn't it one job, one where we saw that, you know, you confess your sins. We saw so much about confession that God is faithful and just to remove our sins from us. Okay, so uh, there is forgiveness. So don't let this passage scare you that, oh man, uh, you know, if we sin, uh, then we could even die. But it's talking about an extreme case. A sin leading to death, okay, where the believer has has uh, uh, gone beyond a place of recovery. So when we see a believer in that kind of a situation, what do we do? Now we are told that uh, he says, "I do not say that he should pray about that." Okay. So uh, initially, what is he saying? You know, he. Uh, Initially, he's saying, if you see a believer in this situation, he will ask. He doesn't use the word pray there, but he says he will ask and he will give him life for those who commit sin, not leading to death. So if there's a believer who has not gone so much to the extent where you know he can't come back, such kind of a person, you pray. Okay, You pray and you ask that they may repent. What can you pray for a person who is in sin, a believer? Obviously repentance. You would declare repentance. You would say, God, you know, bring this person back to repentance. Now, if it is beyond, then he says, uh, then I don't want you to pray. 
okay not even for repentance okay and then he goes on all unrighteousness is sin and there is sin not leading to death so he say uh, there's all kinds of sin yeah, and anything that miss what is sin at the end of the day missing the mark so god has a standard uh, for life for you know when you say life it's very broad um, uh, we know jesus he addressed even the thought issues he said if you look at a woman lustfully then you've already committed uh, adultery you know so jesus standards are very very high very high so uh, missing the mark is if we sin in our thought life if we sin in our actions right if we sin uh, right in in everything in, in whatever we are made up of if we sin we are missing the mark and sin is part of unrighteousness okay however however um there are these sins right which we can always confess before the lord and we can come back but it's only when we give in to sin and become so uh, um, you know drawn by it consumed by it where we are not willing to repent okay and the way hebrews 6 talks about it you go so far away from god those who have tasted of of the things of god right it is very difficult for for such people to be brought back it says so when somebody has gone to that extent that is the only uh, you know time when it is difficult for such people to come back and you know maybe uh, john is talking about that kind of a sin which is leading to death okay so he says if if somebody has gone to that extent then uh, there's even maybe even prayer may not really uh, do much for that individual so now he says we know that whoever is born of god does not sin okay so he is bringing out the characteristics of a born again believer and he already pointed out that it is such a victorious life right? we uh, overcome the world um, we can we have uh, faith which is our victory um, and you know now he says that this person also does not sin how how is he able to say that obviously he is saying that on the basis of uh, the fact that the power of sin is broken over the life of a believer so he does not sin does this mean that anybody who is born again uh, will be a uh, perfect you know not committing any mistake through their lifetime no we all know that that's that's not what he is saying because earlier he talked about if you sin you confess okay so can a believer make a mistake can a believer sin right intentionally or unintentionally yes okay and we read about paul uh, uh, paul's uh, address to the believers he talks about how a believer can be a carnal believer okay a carnal believer is a person who is not walking according to the spirit so you're walking according to your own flesh you're walking according to the world so such uh, such kind of a carnal way of living is sinful okay uh, so yes a believer can sin but what is he pointing out he is saying the potential the potential or the capacity or the ability of the believer is that actually you need not sin okay so whoever is born of god does not sin and now imagine like you know uh, we have uh, we are born again and we are living by that so we have understood okay fine the power of sin over my life is broken and i'm whatever john told till now walk right walk in the light uh, so walk in the truth now the believer is walking like that he's talking to that kind of a believer and he's saying if you're born of god you don't sin okay or you're walking in the truth you're walking in the light but he who has been born of god keeps himself okay keeps himself meaning the person knows to uh you could say like protect themselves or keep away from you know holiness is what holiness is being set apart being kept away from the world right world as in the um, the uh, what do you say that the world should not taint us or it should not uh, pollute us so we are in the world but we are not of the world so somebody who is born of god we are able to protect ourselves from the influence of the world so a believer 
who is born of god what is the potential you don't have to sin okay and you can protect yourself from the influence of the world and the wicked one does not touch him so the wicked one does not touch him means that uh, it's similar to what uh, paul wrote to the ephesians give no foothold to the enemy or uh, give no open door or give no opportunity to the enemy so evil one cannot touch you does it mean that we will not experience challenges here because of what satan is doing no we will experience why because jesus said in this world you will have tribulation and we know that this world is infested by satan and his works okay in one way or the other so even a believer sometimes we struggle we come across uh, you know, certain things that are going on but what is the good news the good news is that we are in a place where we don't have to let these things attach to us or cling to us right so it what it's saying is evil one will not will not touch you means evil one will not have a grip on our lives because we have understood our potential what is our potential we don't sin uh, we know we keep ourselves from the world right and the evil one cannot touch us and of obviously you know when we have a righteous life uh, it is very irritating for satan because what what does he want he wants a loophole he wants a crack right he wants a, a crevice through which he can enter but a righteous life what does it do it blocks every crack so he's trying and trying and trying but he can't cling to us okay so that is the the thought here where basically john is saying live a righteous life and when you live a righteous life you don't have to be afraid of satan trying to uh, get in and uh, you know getting a hold over your life or getting a grip over your life we know that we are of god and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one okay so again he's talking about the influences he says look this world is influenced and he says sway of the wicked one meaning whichever way the wicked one is moving things around in that direction the world is going so there's a there's a huge influence okay there's a powerful influence in the world of the wicked one but we know we are of god so it's it's about identity there's so much about identity here in chapter 5 where he's reminding the believer come on you need to understand who you are so when you know who you are uh, living righteously loving god loving your neighbor you know, those kind of things will sort of come naturally to us because that is what we are made up of then he says and we know that the son of god has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true in his son jesus christ so kind of you know going back to uh, some common thoughts he says that son of man has come son of god has come okay so he's talking about jesus and we have this understanding uh, that we may know him who is true now about the holy spirit is a spirit of truth and now he's selling up of the son he is true what did jesus say john 14 6 again john writes this in his book you know i am the way the truth and the life so the person of christ is true right integrity he is true and we are in him who is true so he is reminding us that we are in christ and christ is true or christ is truth so where are we we are in the truth right and we also know that the word of god is truth right so christ is true we are in the truth uh, in him and we are in the son jesus christ and this is true this is the true god and the eternal life little children keep yourselves from idols amen okay so there is a warning that maybe uh, you know given in their times in in john's times uh, he already warned them about false prophets and about the spirit of antichrist but there could have been an influence about you know from uh, the people outside uh, that they were worshiping idols right so he adds in the warning here and he says like you know your fellowship is with the father the son and the 
Holy Spirit. So I really want you to keep away from any kind of uh, uh, worship to idols. Okay. So that is uh, what we have seen so far from uh, 1 John chapter 1 all the way through chapter 5. Now, moving on to 2 John. Okay, 2 John chapter 1. And I think I'll go through this quickly because uh, there is the theme that that is repeated here, uh, you would find that it's kind of similar, okay? Uh, what you have seen earlier to walk in the truth and to, uh, you know, know God, live righteous uh, and follow after God. So we, we will go through this today, Second um, John chapter 1. And it seems like he is writing to some known people here. Uh, so he actually writes here to a lady, right? Uh, and her children, it seems like. So he writes to an elder, to the elect lady and her children, uh, whom I love in truth. And not only I, but also all those who have, the, have known the truth because of the truth which abides in us and will be with us forever. So it's kind of in continuation, even though he ended that letter there, it's kind of in continuation because he talked about Jesus uh, being true. And now he says, you know, uh, the truth, there are the believers who are all in Christ Jesus, who all uh, have known the truth. They love the truth, okay? Because of the truth which abides in us and will be with us forever. So the truth abides in the believers or the, the life of every believer, thereby a believing community, okay? And one more beautiful thing that he points out here about the truth is that it will be with us forever. So you see, that is uh, uh, something about the truth, no? You can't change it. Truth is truth. We can try to, uh, I mean, you know, you, we can try to cover it up by lies and arguments and reasonings and, uh, you know, so many things. But truth at the end of the day is truth. You can't uh, try and mask it. So he says the truth will be there forever. And, uh, uh, you know, that that is something that, you know, I mean, it's amazing that you can't change the truth. You can't pollute the truth. Okay. Uh, and then he moves on with some exhortation and greetings. He says, grace, mercy, and peace will be with you from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. So this was a common way of uh, greeting. So you would have similar greetings in, in the other episodes of grace, mercy, peace. Let it be with you. Some places you would read, let it be multiplied to you. You know, it's a way of blessing and releasing, declaring uh, the, the resources of God over the people of God. And John uses the same kind of greeting. He says, uh, <coughs> This, whatever I'm blessing you with, where does this resource come from? He says, Look, it's from the Father, from the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Uh, and he, he says, uh, in truth and love, like I'm blessing you. Um, and uh, also truth and love, we saw that, right? When he refers to God, he refers to the person, uh, or the, the Godhead. He uses these two terms in his uh, earlier writings as well, truth and love. So truth and love is part of the Godhead. So he says that uh, with that, I am wishing you, I am blessing you. And then he brings in a word of encouragement and he says that, you know, I rejoice greatly that I have found some of your children walking in truth uh, as we receive commandment from the Father. So uh, he has observed, and earlier I told you, it's probably that uh, John wrote uh, um, th these letters to uh, the churches, right, in his region even the seven churches uh, that he later addresses in the book of Revelation. So in these churches, you know, he probably, he was observing and as he's writing to one particular elder here, he notices that uh, uh, the, the people who come under uh, their leadership, some of them seem to be living righteous, living according to the word of God, living according to the commandment of God. So he says, I found some of your children walking in truth. So uh, it's it's nice that, you know, he has observed this uh, and, uh, you know, he uh, is addressing this matter as we received commandment from the Father. 
Okay, so walking in the truth, you remember, we have uh, talked about this walk in the light uh, and then uh, later on he points out that God is true. So walk in the truth. Uh, these are all like common things that you find uh, John writing about. Okay, and he says, and now I plead with you, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment to you, but that which we have had from the beginning that we love one another. You see, there's a repetition. Right? The same way of talking. He writes to this person, this lady, and uh, who is this lady? We don't have a name. Right? Even if you kind of try to understand which lady was he referring to, we don't know uh, exactly who this lady is. So, you know, it, it, it continues as lady only. Um, and he says that he's not writing anything new. Remember? Earlier also he said that. It's nothing new because we've seen it in the life of Jesus this life of love. And he says, uh, I don't write to you any new commandment, but that which we have had from the beginning. So from the beginning, uh, we, have, we have heard this. This is about loving, of course, loving God. But he more specifically says that we love one another. So it's about demonstrating love to the brotherhood. Okay. And he says, this is love that we walk according to his commandments. We've seen that in 1 John chapter 5, where he said that when we love, we keep his commandments. So this is a repetition. Then he says, this is the commandment that uh, as you have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. So what commandment? Walking in love. Walking in love towards one another more specifically right now. Okay. So he's bringing back the attention of uh, this particular leader to this reality. Okay, and again, there is uh, an additional warning here. He says that uh, they must uh, beware of deceivers. Earlier, he didn't really use uh, this term deceiver, but now he's using, he used the term uh, spirit of Antichrist, the Antichrist. So now he's saying many deceivers have gone out into the world who do not confess Jesus Christ coming in the flesh. Remember, I told you, so there was the, the teaching uh, or the philosophy of uh, Gnosticism, where people were saying that Jesus never came in the flesh. So if there was, he never came in the flesh, uh, it's not possible for him to become that uh, perfect sacrifice, isn't it? So then it completely, uh, it, it completely destroys the, the, the fact that he is the Christ. If he's not human, he can't be the Christ. So now he's very clearly telling the people that deceivers have gone out and what have they told? They've told, uh, you know, that um, into the world, they don't confess Jesus as coming in the flesh. Okay? Uh, and this is a deceiver and an antichrist. Look to yourselves that we do not lose those things we work for, but that we may receive a full reward. Whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. He who abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. So it's just a warning here where he's saying that all along, you know, uh, and he said that earlier in, in uh, uh, the writings in First John, like whatever we have seen, whatever we have heard, whatever we have known, I'm telling you those things. I'm testifying on those things. So, the teaching which you have received, okay? And here, there's a special mention of the doctrine or the teachings about God, the teachings about how to live a godly life, all the, all the truth about God, you know, uh, you hold on to it. Don't let go of it, right? Because, why? Because if we hold on to it, it is implied here, we will receive a full reward. So for our life of faith in God, for our life of um, living for the truth till the end, what is the encouraging truth here? There is a reward. Okay, So we will receive a reward. But if we give up, what will happen? No, we lose that reward. So he's telling them, look, don't lose the things which you have worked for till now. You made it this far in the journey of faith. How can you leave it? If you leave it, 
you will lose your price. I mean, imagine recently, you know, we uh, uh, saw how people came back with Olympic medals. Okay. Now, if anyone who's participating in the Olympics and has trained for years together and uh, their moment has come, uh, let's let's say uh, somebody's a runner, okay, sprinting, and they're running. Okay? This is this is it. They have worked for this their whole life. Now, as they are reaching the finish line, if at all, you know, they get distracted for whatever reason, right? They think some thought, or they look at something, or they just feel tired, and they're like, "Oh, give, let me give up." What happens? You know that bed which could be theirs, they just give it, they give up, right? So giving up at any point will, um, you know, you, you will miss out on the price that you have worked for, for the entire time. And, you know, anyone who has dedicated their lives for that price will definitely feel bad if they don't get it right and our race to live for the lord you know this is like a race of faith uh, at any point if we give up it's very similar our entire lives are to honor god to fulfill the purpose of god for our lives but giving up now or later or you know very close to the end of our journey anytime we miss out on that full reward and so uh, you know, John is kind of warning the believers. There's encouragement. Huh? Some of your people, they are keeping the commandment. They are uh, living in the truth. They're walking in the truth. Very good. But at the same time, be very careful. Don't leave the things which you have worked for. Right? Don't lose it, he says. And he says, look to yourselves. Meaning, uh, we have to be careful. Watch, watch myself. How is my journey? Okay, am I am I in a place of weakness? Never be in a place of weakness, right? Weakness by weakness, I mean walking strong with the Lord. What is it going to take for us to be strong with the Lord today? Okay, are there things in my life which are making me weak? Maybe I'm not committed enough to the Word. Maybe I'm not committed enough to prayer, maybe I'm not committed enough to the ministry that God has called me, or I'm not committed enough to my family. There can be so many reasons, but he says, come on, I want you to be strong. Look to yourself, and we do not lose those things we have worked for. So, you know, you build, right? Time after time, season after season, year after year, you're building on your spiritual life, your journey with God, walk with God. When we've come so far, how to leave it? How to let go, right? Moving forward, don't let go. Don't give up. That you may receive the full reward. So there is an encouragement there. And what is the warning? There can be people who come in with wrong teachings. And in this case, uh, they were deceivers. And uh, he says, uh, an antichrist uh, who don't confess the Lord Jesus as Christ. Now, when they come speaking the, such lies and we receive it, what happens? Whatever we have, uh, you know, sort of uh, developed in our journey, it's possible that we may be ready to give up on it. Okay, so just be careful. So he wants these people. And he says, if anyone comes to you and does not bring this doctrine, meaning the truth of God's word, and obviously, John, you can uh, totally rely on what he's saying because he has walked with Jesus. And that's what he's saying. I'm not giving you any new commandment. I have seen all this. I have lived it. And I'm telling you to live like this. So he says, if anybody comes with a new teaching, a new teaching about God, or you know, new things which don't have any bearing in the revealed word, the revealed will of God, or it has no witness of the spirit of truth, then he says, don't receive him. Okay, And he also said, don't receive him into your house, nor greet him. For he who greets him shares in his evil deeds. So it uh, seems like you know John is very upset here. And he's saying that uh, we have to be severe in treating those who are 
trying to um, you know kind of play on the core belief that we have and say that jesus is not christ why do you even want to associate with this person okay and some of this the initial ways of associating is what you know you you greet the person you uh, kind of fellowship with the person and all but he's saying don't even do that because it's dangerous okay uh, they might influence our doctrine so stay away in other words stay away stay far far away from such deceivers <coughs> and he goes to the extent that you know if you uh, uh, if you associate right if for he who greets him shares in his evil deeds okay, so you can understand the seriousness um, of associating even like little bit go with somebody who is preaching the wrong doctrine away from what we had uh, learned so far okay about the father the son and the holy spirit so he says if you greet that person then what you're sharing in his evil deeds so don't associate or basically just stay away from such people and having many things to write to you i did not wish to do so with paper and ink but i hope to come to you and speak face to face that our joy may be full so you know we see this uh, a desire uh, with, with the apostles even paul many places he writes that he says look i just wish i could come and meet you but uh, uh, you know unfortunately i'm having to write all this and i really hope that there will be a day when i can come and see you right uh so he is expressing his his uh, like his love his his affection for the believers and this particular uh, elder and the lady and the community and he's saying i i just wish like you know i could come and see you in person and then he says the children of your elect sister greet you amen okay so uh so i mean it, it's quite uh, self explanatory whatever we have read here in uh, chapter 1 of john chapter second john so uh, we'll move forward from here uh, are you all okay or is it too fast because it had you know very kind of simple content i kind of thought okay let me go quickly are you fine with that Are you all doing fine? Okay. Any any questions in the uh, Second John chapter one? It's fairly simple. along the same themes to walk in christ commandments and not to let go not to give in to any deceivers Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. The chat. Uh, I have comments. It says yes. Simple, clear. That's great. Okay. So since we have completed, uh, you know, five chapters of one John and then one chapter of uh, second John, I think I will start with the second chapter next week. I just wanted to ask: Is there any particular theme? I told you. You know, so many themes are there. in uh, what john has written so far about the trinity about love about truth about walking in the light about uh, you know loving your brothers and sisters uh, and, and you know and uh, keeping away from deceivers and antichrist is there anything that has touched you the most 
Come on, all. Okay, Kiran. Yeah, please, Kiran, share what you have. Mem verse one four one six. Okay. Respect, little love, like uh, the commandment, the love. We have to go. Uh, we we can go to another person, but ma'am, some sometimes it's very difficult. Like uh, our uh, like uh, family and some neighbors and some church members, some uh, sometimes fellowship and all. If someone is doing wrong and without any reason, something bad and something different and all, then on that moment we have to give uh, we have to give that love. So it's very difficult. So I learn one more. Once again, like uh, yeah, love. Uh, we have to go forward with love. Mm, yeah, thanks, thanks, Kiran. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. That's true. So uh, for her, it's about walking in love, even though it's difficult. No, for me what today, about, uh, uh, we read then. Uh, mm. Can you hear yes. me? Yes, yes, Thomas, I can hear. Uh, today, I've read uh, that word is for uh, what is born of God, overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Yes. That word really touched mm -hmm. me. I read so many times, but today, again, that uh, gives some kind of encouragement and confidence to my spirit. Praise God. Praise God. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. So. Any other portion that has uh, touched others? Okay, for Manu, it is uh, will of God. So praying in the will of God. When we pray in the will of God, He hears us. When we know, when we know that He hears us. So what a confidence right, we have. Uh, and that comes from Doing the will of God. Great. Yeah, thanks, Manu. Thank you for that. So, how about the others? Anything, anything at all that uh, touched you and you're taking away from one job? Manu, the verse has overborn of God. Cannot continue in sin or cannot do sin. Uh, actually, people are struggle to be live like holy. The truth is, mm -hmm. the, the the person who born of God cannot continue in sin. That is the actual state. That's mm -hmm. John clearly mentioning that. Um, whenever mm -hmm. you meditate, that's enough. That sure. will give the power from the sin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. Thanks, uh, Thomas. Uh, Dave, you wanted to say something. I heard your voice in between. Uh, yeah, so so the John, yeah, a very interesting uh, book. Um, mm -hmm. It describes about uh, God in the beginning and goes to how God uh, wants fellowship and how God loves uh, this love and how He is faithful to forgive, forgive mm -hmm. and whatever we do and how because of His love we uh, He wants us to be in, in the fellowship and when we love God. When we are perfect in His love, there is no fear. And if there is no fear, if we are perfect in His love, we have to live a life that is holy. We have to live, live a life that is acceptable to God and um, live a life that we overcome the world. How, um, Because of His love and because of His doing, we can o overcome. Because we are forgiven of the sin, we can overcome the world. Not only that, but we have to maintain our our relationship and our fellowship along with with God, with uh, mm -hmm. two other brothers as well who are in faith um, as ourselves. So we have to maintain that fellowship and maintain that relationship. When we when we are wrong, we have to go ask forgiveness. But when we see them doing wrong, we have to go let them know that uh, they are wrong and. And this is how, uh, because we heard today that God and His Word and His Spirit, they are witness. Mm. Because, because they are witness, we, 
we can overcome the world and we can we can um, help our brothers who also to them also uh, they can overcome the world yes yes praise god thank you thank you dev yeah quite a few uh, takeaways there um, and it's great to hear and aran uh, shares here in the chat she says whatever is born of god overcomes the world so that portion uh, has touched her so praise god for that yeah so i i just encourage you to go back and meditate on uh, these passages there are many thoughts that are coming through and i'm sure every time you read it it will bless your uh, heart and you will learn how to truly love god fellowship with god and also uh, treat our brothers and sisters so for now we will wrap up uh, we will meet again in the next class and by next week uh, i would like to put your assignments up so you can work with completed one john so we you can start working on the assignments um and you can read up say two john and uh, third john and then also start reading uh, the book of john so we are going to go through all these um, you know in the coming classes so uh, we'll just pray and close class so arun can you please pray before we wrap up sure was there yeah sure thank you let, let me pray um thank you lord for blessing this another new day to learn uh, your word lord uh, we are living in this uh, fallen world of the world um keep us all in the faith lord in assurance to believe in you alone and lord father help us all to live a righteous life to uh, to to overcome the deeds of the satan so lord um So Lord, as the day goes by, Lord, let us all sink, Lord, for in the truth, Lord. That Lord, any word says, Lord, when you when we know the truth, the truth will set us free. So Lord, Lord, I pray for all the students, that Lord, Father, and I pray for all the faculties to open up our heart to know your truth, Lord. So Lord, uh, so Lord, I pray this in Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much, Aaron. Thank you, everyone. um uh, take care god bless you you can move on to the next class we will connect again uh, next week bye for now god bless thank you master thank you bye